Today we're in Brunswick County, Virginia at Dogwood Grove Greenhouses. Well, these tomatoes are just gorgeous. They're so tall. I see lots of ripe fruit on them. And I notice one of the first things I see is that you've got, you're growing in a bag with some type of media. What is that? Yeah, this is coconut fiber. That's the most popular item used probably in small greenhouses. Now it's 100% organic. Okay, okay, that is wonderful. And so, you know, just like, just like the home gardener, you're starting with something that's great for the plants. You put your transplants right in there. What time of the year do you put transplants into this media? We planted, we started these from seed on October 21st, and three weeks from that date, we brought them in here and put them in the greenhouse. October, that's something else, because as people are watching this show, they're approaching the last frost, and they're thinking about putting their tomato transplants out. And so it's important for them to think about the type of soil they're growing in. You're growing in a nice coconut fiber that's good for these plants. And of course, they want to increase the organic matter and have good soils for their growing. Now, I also see these plants are very, very tall. And they're not very bushy. I can see a single plant here, it looks like. What do you do to make them like this? In the greenhouse, we have to keep them to, to one main stem so okay. that we can clip them to the string and keep them going upright. So we, we do sucker the plants. We remove all suckers and just leave the main stem. One intact. main stem. And you've got a string that comes down that you tie the plant to? We, we clip them. Well, okay. When the plants are very small, we drop the string and we put a clip right down near the bag level. And then as the plant grows, we just clip under a stem as the plant uh, goes up. To support all the weight. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fruit on there. That's a lot of weight. It's a lot of weight for each plant when very, they're full. Very good. Now, we're in a greenhouse. We're covered, so we're not getting rained on here. So how do you deliver water to these plants? We have a sprayer in each bag, and it's set on a timer. We have <laughs> fertilizer injectors, so the, the fertilizer is already included. Uh, incorporated in the water when it goes to the plant. So every time they get water, they get fertilizer. So I think it's fair to say tomatoes really need a, a fair amount of water. They really do, and it right. has to be uniform or you, you will have some trouble. Well, that's a good tip for the home gardener because sometimes people rely on just rainwater. But I think for consistency, having good, healthy plants, consistent yields, they could irrigate their tomatoes and probably have better luck. Yeah, the consistency has a lot to do with it because we've noticed if you if a bag dries out, we will see blossom in right. That's a lot of times how I will first notice that you have a problem. So something like the irrigation material you have here or a soaker hose or drip tape would probably do well for the home gardener. I would think so. Well, Darlene, we talked about supporting the plants in the way uh, with the clips and the trellises, and I see a different way of supporting the peppers here. Um, most of the time in the home garden, they'll use cages for tomatoes and, and things like that. Would, uh, why do you all do it this way here? The main thing for us is keeping the plants upright and getting good airflow, and that's, that's a large part of it. We just use whatever system works. For the tomato plants, it's easier to keep them to one stem and keep the plants stretched out, get more light down, filtered through to the bottom leaves. And uh, we do the same with the peppers and the cucumbers also. So you take off the side shoots. And I even notice some of the stems here, they, the bottom leaves are completely gone. What happened there? We do. We start taking off the bottom branches about five weeks before production. The bottom leaves will start getting yellow, and then they're really not helping the plant. They can start having disease issues. And so we just take them out. And that also improves your airflow so that you don't have leaves close to the, close to the ground or close to your soil line. Gotcha, very good. Less, a little bit less fungal disease problems maybe because of that airflow through there keeps the plants dry. I really dry. think so. I really think so. I noticed these yellow cards throughout the, throughout the crop in the bags. What do you use these things for? We use this to monitor to see what insects are coming in the greenhouse. Most of what you see here are fungus gnats and they don't cause us a whole lot of problems. There are some other bugs though that uh, are an issue. For us, thrips are, are one of the, the uh, bugs that we have a problem with here at times. We use beneficial insects, though, for control. We don't spray pesticides in our greenhouse for insects. So a ben beneficial in insect, what, what does that mean? What is that? What it means, when we start seeing a bad bug appear on these cards, we go ahead and order some beneficials in. In this case, uh, for thrips, we use a beneficial mite. It comes in a, a little paper sachet bag. And here's one of the bags, okay. but you have to put them in early if when you're using beneficials. We also put some of our beneficial mites in the soil, and we use some parasitic wasps later in the season for okay. controlling other insects. But this helps us find out what's coming in and try to be ahead of when we're going to have problems. So you check your plants quite often, don't you? We really do. We check these uh, cards on a regular basis. We check our plants on a regular basis. One thing we do also is flip the leaves up sometimes when you're checking because sometimes you will see the beginning of problems from the bottom of the leaves with insects. 
and, uh, and it's important in your outdoor crops also to just check your plants and so that you'll know when prob problems start before it gets out of hand. Well, I notice you, the beneficials you have in here work very well in the greenhouse, but how would a home gardener be able to utilize something like that? What we do outside is try to plant anything that we can that will draw beneficial insects. We uh, have a lot of herbs that we planted. We've got a little herb garden section out there. We plant flowers that will attract beneficials. And it's very active out there on a sunny morning. You'd be surprised at, at all the little parasitic wasps you see. Well, Jerry, uh, Darlene did a great job of showing us everything that she does in the greenhouse. And we talked about the beneficials in there and how that you all buy those to put in the greenhouse. But what can a gardener do or what do you do out here in your outside farm area? Chris, we, we realized several years ago that planting certain plants helped attract beneficial insects that will, that will help you with your pest control outside. And a good example here is the catnip. Okay. This is uh, catnip. This is a plant in the mint family, the spearmint. Okay. And all of these, uh, most of these herbs are perennials, and they attract good beneficial insects. So you plant your other crops that you want nearby, and then you plant these on the perimeter or in between to bring those beneficials in, maybe even bring pollinators in too, possibly. That's true. You bring in the honeybees, the butterflies, all of the good bugs come to these uh, herb plants. That's great. So you don't, have to buy the, you don't have to buy the bugs, just the plants. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, wonderful. Well, we thank y'all so much for letting us come out here today to see your operation. It was really a treat. Well, for more information about beneficial insects or greenhouse tomatoes or tomato transplants, please contact your local county extension office. For From the Ground Up, I'm Chris Mullins, and we'll see you next time.